Hi everyone, welcome back. Our lesson today is going to be on different operations with polynomials. I think once you get um, going into this, you remember it and you will be absolutely fine. This is kind of um, a good review of everything you've done in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2 for sure with polynomials. So in case you forgot what a polynomial is, a polynomial is a combination of any um, type of coefficients and variables all put. You can have a monomial, you can have a binomial, trinomial, just different combinations of letters, exponents, all that kind of stuff separated by positive and negative signs. So the first thing we're going to do is review polynomial addition. So polynomial addition is the same thing as saying that I want you to combine like terms. We just sometimes, I guess, like confuse it because it looks like we want to foil it, but because there's a plus sign in the middle, we're actually going to add it. So an example of, of this would be, okay, let's say we had the problem five plus two X plus three X squared plus and that's all in parentheses, plus 2x squared minus 12 plus x. So this is an example of two different polynomials. So you have one on the left here. This is a trinomial because it has three terms, one, two, three, um, five, the 2x and the 3x squared. And then the other one is also a trinomial. So when you do your polynomial addition, you are going to completely drop the parentheses and don't even like pretend they're not even there when you have an addition sign. So all you're going to do is combine your like terms. So we're going to add the 5 and the negative 12 together, and that will give me a negative 7. And then I'm going to add the 2x and the um, 1x together is actually 1x. That's going to give me 3x. Now I'm going to put it in front of the number because 3x, if you do the descending order, 3x is higher because it has an exponent and the 7 doesn't. The squared term is actually the highest. So that one, if I put that together, I'm going to have 3x squared and 2x squared, and that's going to be 5x squared. And that should be first because that is the higher order of operations because it has 2 as an exponent. So this is the correct order that it needs to be written in, in descending order from highest exponent to lowest exponent. And that's all you have to do when you are adding your polynomials together. Now let's see what happens when you subtract it. So we're going to go ahead and add subtraction to this because subtraction is literally the same thing. It's just that you have a minus sign. So let's see what a subtraction one would look like. So let's say we had, um, let's do 4x to the third minus 6x plus 8 minus 2x to the third minus 3x minus 7. Okay, so again, we have trinomials, which isn't always going to happen, but I'm trying to do kind of the bigger problems first. So the only difference here is, yes, we're going to combine like terms. However, this is now a distributing problem because this minus sign in the middle indicates that everything past this is also being taken to the negative power, or to, not to negative power, it's also being subtracted. So everything past there, if you remember, we are going to change this into a negative one that gets distributed to all of this. So this is actually a negative 2x to the third, a positive 3x, and a positive 7. So now once we have distributed the minus sign in there, we can go ahead and combine like terms. So subtraction is still combining like terms. It's still addition. It's just that you have to get rid of that minus sign by distributing it first. So now when we combine like terms, we'll put our cubes together. So that'll give me a 2x cubed. We will put our x's together. So negative 6x and positive 3x. That'll give me a negative 3x. And then I will put my constants together, my 8 and my positive 7, and that'll give me a 15. 
and that's it. You don't have to do anything else. You are just simplifying by subtracting your um, like terms. So again, the key to addition and subtraction is you are basically just combining like terms. Just make sure on the subtraction one that you are distributing the minus sign before you combine like terms. Okay, the next portion then is multiplication. Okay, so again, you can um, go ahead and definitely follow along on the daily log with this. There'll be notes in there for you to kind of follow, fill in, and practice while I'm explaining this stuff. So now multiplication. Okay, we're going to do three or four different types of multiplication ones. The first one is going to be just a good old-fashioned distributing, because that is multiplication still. And so we'll be using the same sorts of um, properties that we used when we did our exponent rules, which is why we did this first. So here's an example of a distributing one first. We will do that one. So let's go 2x times x to the fifth minus 7x to the third plus 4. And so the reason why we practice our exponent rules on Tuesday is because remember when you multiply exponents, you are actually adding them together. So we can't forget to do that. So I'm, I think you'll remember how to distribute, but just in case you forgot, you're going to take this 2x and we have to multiply it by everything inside this parenthesis. So 2x times x to the fifth would give me 2x to the sixth. Remember, we are adding exponents. 2x times negative 7x to the third would give me negative 14x to the fourth. Again, I'm multiplying the whole numbers, but I'm adding the exponents. And then last would be plus 8x. Okay, and that is your basic distributing one. Now to take it up a notch, the next thing that you would have learned in algebra is how to FOIL. Okay, FOIL or you could use the box method. I will show you both and you can decide how you like to do it. I will show you um, FOILing in number two and number three, I will show you the box method. So uh, FOIL, let's go a simple one, x minus two times x plus nine. So FOIL is basically a double distributing problem. And so FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, last, F-I-O-L, first, outer, inner, last. And so the first two terms, so that would be my X, I'm taking my first term and I'm multiplying it by the first term in the other parenthesis. And then I'm also multiplying it by the first term in, or the second term in that second set of parentheses. So I'm going to go x times x, which you don't have to write this all out all the time, but I'm just showing you x times x is x squared. And then you will do x times 9, which is 9x. And then you have to distribute, double distribute that negative 2. So now the o and the l, or the i and the l, the inside and the last, you'll multiply negative 2 times x and then negative 2 times 9. So it's like a double distributing. You have to distribute both of those numbers. So then you'll have negative 2 times x, which gives you negative 2x, and then negative 2 times 9, which gives you negative 18. Once you do those four steps, so the FOIL, when you multiply those four things together, now you want to look to combine like terms. Sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. In this case, we can combine like terms. We can combine the 9x and the negative 2x into 7x. So my final answer would be x squared plus 7x minus 18. And that's our final answer for foiling or multiplying two binomials together. All right, let's take a look at another way that foil can be hidden. So another way FOIL can be hidden is when you see a problem like this. So let's go 2x plus 3 squared. Okay, we cannot unfortunately distribute the 2, the squared, into this. Um, I can explain why in a moment, but it's not going to work out to be the same answer if you do that. If you remember, when you square something, it means that you multiply it by itself. Like for example, before when we had x squared, x squared means x times x. So we can't just distribute that two in there. You're not going to get the same answer. 
as if you would multiply the 2x plus 3 times itself. So this is actually a, a hidden FOIL problem. So this actually should be written as 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. Now I'm going to show you how to use the box method and you can decide if you like this better. If you don't, that's fine. You can use um, the good old fashioned FOIL double distributing method. So box method is exactly what it is. It's going to be, we're going to build a box. We have two terms here. So a two times two, a binomial times a binomial. So I'm going to make a grid, a two by two grid, which gives me four squares. It doesn't matter where you put them. I'll put the first binomial on the top. So two X plus three on the top. And I'll put the second binomial along the side, which is also 2x plus 3. Now you're going to do a multiplication table, or I think you might have done it in science before as well, where you do the Punnett square. And you're going to multiply together. So 2x times 2x would give me 4x squared. And then 2x times 3 gives me a 6x in this box. 2x times 3 is 6x, and 3 times 3 is 9. Again, we got to look to combine like terms. We can combine the 6x's together. So 6x plus 6x gives me 12x. So my final answer would be 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Because these here, these guys don't have partners. They can't have anything that's alike. So we're going to leave it how it is and then write it in descending order. Now, just to show you why it won't work, let's just pick some random numbers. I'll just pick 2 and 3. So let's say that I had 2 plus 3 squared, or I did 2 plus 3 times 2 plus 3. So if I did it this way and I distributed the square inside, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and that gives me a total of 13. Now if I do it the correct way over here on the right, and I did 2 plus 3 times 2 plus 3, I would have to do my parentheses first. So 2 plus 3 is 5. 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 times 5 is 25. This is the correct way. This is not correct. You cannot distribute an exponent when there's a plus sign. Now, you could distribute the exponent yesterday or in the last lesson when we did power rule when they're multiplied. But adding doesn't hold the same property. So just be very careful of that. You can't distribute that 2. You have to do FOIL. All right, I'm going to show you one more that we're going to force it just a little bit and go to a grown folks problem here. One that's a little bit bigger, we're going to do a binomial times a trinomial. So this will be the most extensive problem that I would ask you to do. And so when I say a binomial times a trinomial, we'll start with this, x plus 4. Then we're going to multiply it by a trinomial, 6x squared plus 2x minus 8. Now again, you can choose either method. You could choose a FOIL type method or a double distributing, or you could do a box method. It doesn't matter, you'll get the same answer. If you wanted to double distribute, this is what you would do. You would take the X and you would distribute the X into all three of these terms. Then you would have to take the four and do the same thing. Take the four, and then multiply the four times these three things. So if you notice, you're gonna have six answers to start with, because this X will get multiplied three times, and then the four will get multiplied three times to give you six different answers before you combine like terms. You can do it that way. I like the box method, so I'm gonna go ahead and do the box method and show you what that looks like. So this time we're gonna have a two by three square I'm going to have x plus 4 along the side. Again, it doesn't matter where you put that x plus 4. You could put it at the top or at the bottom. Well, if you put it at the top, you'd have to have a, a different size square because you only got two going across. You'd have to have three going down. And then I'm going to put 6x squared plus 2x minus 8 at the top. Then I'm going to go ahead and do my multiplication table. So 6x squared times x will give me 6x to the third x times 2x is 2x squared. x times negative 8 is negative 8 squared. Negative 8x, sorry, just negative 8x. Then we got to do 4 times 6x squared, which gives me 24x squared. 4 times 2x is 8x. And then 4 times negative 8 will give me a negative 32. 
Then I look to combine like terms. If you notice, the like terms will be diagonal from each other. So these match up and these match up. And look at that, our actual 8x minus 8x is gonna cancel out. So we will have no term of an x left. We will have 6x to the third. 24x squared plus 2x squared gives me 26x squared. And then I'm left with a negative 32. Okay, so a little bit more work, a little more involved, but you can decide which is the easiest for you. All right, now you can go ahead and complete your uh, daily log and then you can hit submit when you're done. Let me know if you have any questions and good luck.